Now that we've seen how to take an address, decompose it into offset, index, and tag, we've seen how those addresses are mapped into the cache. Let's go through an example. So here is an example access pattern. These are the addresses I'm accessing. And the question is, you know, are they going to be cache hits? Are they going to be cache misses? And when I bring a certain block in, what do I evict? And so on, right? So let's kind of walk through this example in some detail. So first, I'm accessing address 4. Right, so let's write down address four. That's a bunch of zeros at first, then three zeros here, and then one zero zero. So this is the number four, and this is a 32-bit address. The last three bits are my offset bits. The next three bits are my index bits, and the rest is going to be my tag. So let's say that on program startup, let's say that my tag array is full of garbage. Typically, the processor has a valid bit over here, and so, so when a program starts up, these valid bits are all set to zero. Okay, and so that's how I know that initially when I look up my cache, I'm always going to get a cache miss. Over time, the valid bits turn to ones. But let's ignore the valid bits for now. It's safe to say that since I've never seen this address before, it's going to be a cache miss. And so now I go to memory, fetch that byte of data, fetch the neighboring eight bytes of data as well, so I bring in an entire block. So I bring in bytes at addresses 0 through 7 and place it in my cache. Right. So my tag is now going to contain these bits here. So my tag says that these are all zeros here. I'd use this, these index bits to map this piece of data, this block, into set 0. And in this case, since I'm addressing byte 4, I'm going to look at these offset bits and that tells me that byte number four is what I'm going to send back to the CPU, right? So this is how this entire data access is handled. Then I'm going to make a request for address seven, right? So let's again write down the entire address in detail. This is what address seven is going to look like. So the first thing is I do is I look at my index bits. This sends me to set zero. I pull out the tag bits. I compare it to my tag bits over here, they are a match. This tells me that byte 7 is already sitting in the cache, right? And indeed, that's the case because I'd already brought in bytes 0 through 7 when I was making my request for address 4. So the access to address 7 turns out to be a cache hit. And then I use my offset bits to pick out the seventh byte in that block and send it back to the CPU, right? So the way I'm using my bits is I first use my index bits to figure out exactly which set I'm dealing with. Once I've done that, I look at my tag bits to do the tag comparison with whatever is sitting in the tag already. And if the tag matches, then I look at my offset bits to pick out a specific byte in that block and send it back to the CPU. Okay, let's continue on. Let's look at the next location, which is address 10. So that's again a bunch of zeros. 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? So this is the number 10. These three bits tell me I'm mapping to set 1. That's currently got garbage, so this turns out to be a cache miss. So this is a miss. And once I bring in the data, I'm going to place it in here. So bytes 8 through 15 are placed in my cache. I set my tag to be whatever these bits are. So that's going to be a bunch of zeros. And then having done that, I look at these last three bits and this byte over here, which is at address 10, now gets sent back to the CPU. Then let's look at the next location, which is address 13. Again, let's do the same process. Let's decompose it into its different bits. 13 is 001, 101. So it maps to set number one. So I go down here. I read out the tag, compare it to my own tag bits. They match, so this is a cache hit. And then I use these bits to pick out byte number 13 here and then send it back to the CPU. Okay, and as you continue working through this example, you'll see that this next access is a miss. And then I bring in bytes 16 through 23 here. And so this is going to have tag bits zero. Now let's move on to this next case here, which is a little bit more interesting. So if I look at that address, it's 001, then it has 000 and then 100, right? So this is the number 68. So I look at these three bits. This sends me to set zero. I read out the tag and I compare it to my own tag. 
and you'll see that in this case they don't match right one tag is zero the other tag is one so the access to 68 is going to be a cache miss and then I go and bring in those eight consecutive bytes so bytes at addresses 64 through 71 and I place it into my cache the tag is now changed to be this new tag of one and once I've done all that I use these offset bits to pick out byte number 68 and send it back to the CPU and so as you continue through this example you'll see that the access to 73 is a miss the access to 78 turns out to be a hit because when I have a miss on 73 I bring in a block that contains addresses 72 through 79 so the access to 78 turns out to be a hit and this is going to be a miss as well this one is going to be a miss as well because an access to 83 brings in bytes 80 through 87 right so when I subsequently access 88 that's going to be a miss as well now when I try to access byte 4 right remember that byte 4 had been brought into the cache long ago but when I brought in byte 68 that block evicted this entire block over here right and so when I try to access byte 4 it turns out to be a cache miss so this is also a miss the access to 7 turns out to be a hit again right just as the access to 4 brought an entire block in and led to a hit on 7 same way when I have a miss on 4 and bring an entire block in the next access to 7 turns out to be a hit and then the access to byte 10 also turns out to be a miss because that block had been evicted by my access to byte 73 okay so this is how the various blocks get placed in cache they get evicted by other blocks that map to that same set and so on